Hey everyone, today on the show, I'm gonna show you how to create a Damon Byte Super Nintendo to USB adapter, just like this one. Let's go. So Damon Byte is an open source project by Mick Giver in Finland, and it revolves around the Arduino Pro Mini. You basically wire the pins of the controller directly into the Arduino and then flash it with the correct software for that type of controller. Now I'm doing a Super Nintendo controller just because I need one and also I, I think it's one of the easier ones to do but there's also controller adapters for the regular Nintendo PC Engine, Saturn, Mega Drive and a generic arcade stick version where you just wire the each button directly into the Arduino. So one of the good things about the uh, Damon Byte adapters is that latency, the controller latency, just the latency that the controller introduces, not talking about the console or the, or the screen, just that is one millisecond. And we think that a frame is 16.6 .6 milliseconds, so it's very low. Some people do like those snack adapters, these other hardware low latency adapters on the Mr. FPGA. But for my money, the Damon Byte adapters are my preferred solution because this one comes in under 10 bucks. There are certainly other better versions of this DIY kit. Um, Mick Giver himself was selling a 3D printed version that was really sturdy. I've seen other versions where they mount the controller ports on a breadboard. But for my money, if uh, you're not gonna be throwing this up against the wall or jumping up and down on it, this is the cheapest and easiest way to get yourself a Damon Byte adapter. So you're gonna need an Arduino Pro Micro. I got this one from AliExpress for about six bucks. It was pretty easy to get. You'll also need a Super Nintendo controller extension cable. So, cause what you're gonna do is cut off the female end, like the end that's usually in the console, and also some heat shrink tubing. I'm gonna put this over once everything's done to kind of tidy it up and keep it a little bit neat. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is snip the wire. Now what I'm doing is giving myself a lot of runway here because basically now this adapter is going to end up looking something like this. There's going to be a bit of a pigtail. I'm only doing it this length because I'm worried that I'm not very good at stripping wires and I'm going to mess something up. But if you're really confident, I would just strip them all the way back there, put a little sheeting over the top and you would have a very tidy little adapter. But I reckon this is a pretty simple way too. See? Here it is, we've got five wires and each one of them correspond to voltage, clock, latch, data, and ground. The problem is we don't know which one of these pins, uh, we know the pins, but we don't know which color it corresponds to. So one little trick, you could try to pry this unit open a little bit, that might damage it a bit, but we've still got this bit here so what I'm gonna do is pry open this with a screwdriver to understand which color wire matches to which pin. God, ow. Green is voltage, yellow is clock, white is latch, red is data, and well, surprise, surprise, black is ground. So it's pretty straight up and down. It's about as easy as soldering's ever gonna get. You already have the, the diagrams, you know exactly which wire to put into which pole. We're gonna have to do a little solder bridge at the top. That's just, uh, it's not mandatory, but it's something that's recommended by Mick. Before we go on, the next thing is, let's take our heat shrink tubing and it needs to go on right now over the top and to make it easier, I mean, this one's gonna go over the actual board. I'll put it on right now too. Shit. Just for the sake of completeness, I'm gonna pre-tin the ends of these wires so they solder in a little bit easier. Nice. Looking at our diagram, the first thing I wanna do is create a solder bridge. So the white wire, which is the latch, is going into pin number two. Now the clock, which is the yellow wire, will go into the pin below under three. All right, so that's how it's gonna lay flat like this. 
Now I'm going to put the green wire in through the VCC hole and thankfully these are kind of staying in here. Makes it easier for me to work on. Finally here I need to put the red wire into A0. So now I've got all my wires in and that's pretty all right. Like, cause now what's gonna happen is this plastic cover is gonna slide on over the top of here. And actually I don't need the white uh, extra bit of shrink wrap cause usually that was if I had exposed wires all the way back here, I'd use a bit of that, but I've managed to, to do it pretty all right. However, before I do the final kind of stage, the I'm actually gonna program this uh, with the firmware, then I'm gonna test it out to make sure that I've got all the wires and everything's in. And then when I'm sure everything's good, then I'm gonna put the shrink wrap on. First thing we need to do is get the code from Mick Giver's GitHub repository. So come to the page, search it on Google. And I find the easiest way is just to grab everything at once. Come to code, download zip. That's gonna download it to your computer. Once you've downloaded the code, extract it somewhere, you need to load up the Arduino IDE. Once that loads up, come and open up, find your project on the disk. I put it to the desktop here, SNES controllers. That's the project you can tell with the little icon there. Few things, come down to tools, board, Arduino Leonardo, you need to set that. And then also, so it knows where to find it, making sure, come to port and select your Arduino Leonardo from there as well. After that, First of all, we need to compile the code. So let's hit compile and finally upload. So we're uploading that into the Arduino and in the background, I can hear it connecting and disconnecting because it's disconnected it and then reconnects the window says, oh, there's a couple of controllers are connected here. The way we can verify that is I just use Joy CPL in Windows and we come along there to the properties. And if I'm boop, 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 if my videos synced correctly it's all working my controller adapter works perfectly and the reason that there's two of them there because this code supports two adapters you've just got to wire in two plugs into the arduino and you can have a two-play adapter pretty easily since everything is working here i'm going to put the heat shrimping back on take the controller out let's unplug that there we go, over the port, and just, ah, ah! I don't have a heat gun, all I've got is this lighter. Just gently run it underneath. Just run it like this, and then it won't damage the Arduino. Ow, 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 ow. Still a bit hot. So that's our final adapter. Um, you could, if you wanted to, put a little bit of gaffer tape over that if you were really worried uh, about cable strain or a little bit of electrical tape. This end of the the heat, the heat shrink actually helps it a little, a little bit with cable management. So now you've got a Damon Byte adapter on one end, a Super Nintendo controller on the other end. That's a micro USB. And then I've got, for example, just this short little dongle of a micro USB cable to connect it into your computer. So that's how you make a Damon Byte Super Nintendo to USB adapter. I think this thing's great. Like for what you get for under 10 bucks, you can make it yourself really easily and you get a one millisecond controller adapter. This is great. So thanks a lot to, to Mick Giver in Finland. I, I read about uh, this a while ago and then I heard the podcast with Mick and Artemio and then I got inspired to, to get one. I thought I need one of these in my life. And then I heard that was sold out from Mick. And then I was so happy to see that these were like really straightforward to make, even for a big idiot like me. So I reckon you can absolutely make one. Uh, I want to make an arcade stick version soon, like a generic harness that I can put in any one of my stick bodies. And also I'm going to make a version for Famicom controllers because Mick has a, a version that works with NES and a Famicom has the same pins and I have a really nice Famicom stick. So I'm going to be making one of those for myself soon. So thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of this video and I'll see you next time.